Hello, I'm Jeremy Kent, and for today's Safety Minute, we're going to talk about using the correct tool for the correct job. That seems simple. Every day we fill out a JSA, a job safety analysis, and we check the little box that says, use the correct tool for the correct job. But what does that really mean? To illustrate this concept, today we're going to talk about using the correct tool, or the correct tools, for stripping cable. I've asked Justin to play the role of stubborn electrician for us. The stubborn electrician is going to look at tools that can get the job done, but the question is, are they the correct tool for the correct job? So, when we talk about stripping high voltage cable, it's one of the things we do to get a cable to look just like this at the end, so that ultimately we can produce terminations at the end. These are how we move power at high voltage underground. These cables are complicated. They have a series of layers and then that you have to isolate and so you have to break out the overall outer sheath to the whole thing. You have to get the concentric neutral, you have to get the semiconductor, you have to get the insulation and you have to get the actual conductor all at the right length at the right dimensions with the right cuts all the way through. Now, Justin, what's the right tool for this job? Well, this one, in the old way, So, the way. St stubborn electrician, Justin, and what we see with a lot of electricians out there is saying, if I can do it with my knife, that's all I need. And you'd be amazed how many cables are just terminated with a knife. When we actually talk about how to do these tools, which is where Justin was going, we bring in all of the right tools. And instead of just a knife and a pair of pliers, the right tools include a uh, pair of side cutters, a pair of proper stripping pliers, a semi-con stripper, a insulation stripper, in some cases the additional tool to be able to pull back the wire as well as install the end lug, and a chamfer tool. Collectively these tools that are the right tools cost almost a thousand dollars. These cool tools cost about 20 bucks. Want to guess why we end up seeing these tools a lot more often? But let's look at why using the right tool for the right job matters. Justin, stubborn electrician Justin, if you were to go ahead and start this cut to go ahead and expose the wires or the, the concentric neutral that you needed to, how would you do that? Okay, stop and look. Right now we've got a blade less than an inch away from his finger. Okay, and all of a sudden he's going to have to go ahead and put a whole bunch of pressure into this to try to pull and cut it. We aren't going to go through how to actually do this, that's probably for a different video. But look at the exposure right here. When you do this with a pair of side cutters, you can come right in here, I've got no blade next to it, and the only way this motion can go is into itself. And that can start it, and then I can use pliers, the right pliers, to pull this back, and then I'm good to go. We'll talk about the semiconductor first. Justin, how are you going to go ahead and start the semiconductor? So again, to get super accurate, he had to get his fingers even closer to that blade. And even though he's wearing cut-resistant gloves, now you're sitting here risking this. Aside from the quality issues of how well do you think Justin can control this knife blade to make sure that he only cuts the semiconductor, which is you know, less than a 30 seconds of an inch thick, and doesn't cut the insulation, which is the goal of this process? Instead, the right answer is to use the semiconductor stripper. When you put this on the cable, and it goes on and you tighten it properly and set it, the blade is entirely contained on the inside. That blade is nowhere near my hands. And that blade is set to an exact depth by dialing in the depth that I'm going to go ahead and cut. By doing that, you've completely taken away the hazard of getting cut. OK, how do you do the insulation? Oh, there we go. That's even better, right? So look, stubborn electrician Justin, I've got this right here. And I've got to cut through almost half an inch of material with a blade. And I have to get enough pressure to put my finger right behind it. See how easy it is if he was to slip off of this and come right into his finger? Okay, you never want to put the, that posi yourself in that position where you have a blade you're pulling against with that much pressure to then try to strip it. When you use the stripping tool, the stripping tool for insulation goes on. And then we set it properly. And when we set this tool, you can look and see the blade again is fully inside. My hands are going to be out here. I'm way away from it. And this tool is actually going to give me a really nice spiral cut all the way through and then give me an exact cut and get exactly what I want. And I'm never going to nick the underlying conductor. 
I can do the whole thing without ever getting myself in, a har in harm's way. And I can have a higher quality product. Okay, Justin, now we're down to this and I need you to go ahead and chamfer the insulation at the end. We gotta get a nice little chamfer. <clears throat> there we go again, look. He's even worse now, the position just got worse. We're now, without even having a conductor between us, having to pull into our thumb to get that 45 degree angle. That's not the right tool for the right job. If you use the chamfer tool that's designed for this, it goes right on the cable, it comes right down, and when you turn it and cut it, it cuts the perfect chamfer right at the edge. Again, the blade's fully protected, it even has a protector on it, my hands are away away from the blade and I can put all my effort into it and nothing that I'm going to do is going to have that blade come into me or my fingers. <clears throat> this same concept applies to low voltage cable. Not an electrician out there, at least not a stubborn one, who won't tell you they can strip this cable with that utility knife. Go ahead, how do you strip that cable? <clears throat> okay, so there we go, we're starting already and he has to do a cut where he has to do a spin. And after you've done your spin cut, what are you going to do next? He's going to grab it, and this is where you get the really good exposure, because if you slip, you got your hand right underneath it. And so as you have, you're having a hard time doing it, you end up with your hand right in line of where you're putting all that pressure on that knife. <clears throat> when you use the right tool, when you use a cable stripping tool designed for low voltage cable, it goes on, the blade is fully protected and recessed back in. It can be dialed exactly in. And then just to show how much better of a product it is when you do it properly, you end up where you can take the entire insulation off in a nice spiral wrap, just like this. I pre-did this, obviously. And you end up with a near-perfect situation at the end. And I never got my fingers in hard, harm's way, or my hands. So when we talk about using the right tool for the correct job, or the right tool for the right job, it doesn't just mean a tool that works. Stubborn electrician Justin has stripped hundreds of cables using just these two tools. But it doesn't mean they're the right tools for the right job. <clears throat> Investing in the thousand dollars of tools to completely remove the safety risk to improve quality is the right tool for the right job, and that's a big difference. And if you want to put financial numbers on this, do you want to guess what a recordable injury or a cut to a hand or anything else costs when Justin ends up with that blade inevitably after his thousandth termination slips and cuts himself? even with the gloves, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. So like most things with safety, you're either going to pay up front to not have the accident or you're gonna pay a lot more later on. That's why we use the right tool for the right job. Applications just like this where investing in the right tools make the project and the job safer and usually higher quality exist all throughout our projects. Thank you, this has been the Safety Minute.